Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an aspect. This one's going to be a different uptake today because obviously this one's another collab or shall we say an interview for Wendy, this channel of Mighty Loves Corner. The link will be in the description below of my video here today. So if you want to check her out, feel free to check her out by clicking on or looking into the description and show your support for her okay i want to just quickly make it brief that i want to thank her also for allowing me to do these collabs that has been come about as of late even though you may have seen some of them already which i'll link in the i bar above me which is obviously the mental health collab kind of tag or get to know me tag of a mental health tag this one's almost similar based on like i'm gonna put it under maybe mental health and awareness kind of questions that she's put out to me also and saying this as a disclaimer before i continue on with these questions and everything else like if you see any signs and symptoms in regards to any of the past and present videos that i have suggested to you or i've made for you guys do seek professional help for yourself or your loved one also if you need second opinions to help for yourself or your loved one because i don't forever condone self-harm because it'd be much appreciated so also in saying this you might not have heard some of these terms that i'm going to bring out to you so i'm going to break it into chunks for you hopefully most of it needs to be addressed and that hopefully it will gain a better understanding and hopefully clear up any misconceptions or misunderstandings or to these you know bits and pieces that i'm about to share with you all if you're into any of these videos and more that i bring up be it mental health versus my life story with asperger's syndrome along with fun along the way feel free to subscribe to my channel and and say saying this don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you can keep up to date for future video reference so let's Number begin one, what illnesses do i have i have asperger's syndrome social anxiety anxiety and other hosts of mental health conditions but i'm gonna just bring it out what is asperger's syndrome and the differentiation between what the autism as well as you know the autism spectrum disorder just briefly and also again before i begin this part of it if there's any autistics out there that are there i humbly apologize because i know in the autistic community many of us have agreed that some of the terms that we do go about be it disorder spectrum disorder what have you that we you know tend to want to abolish that as well as high functioning and low functioning autism so in saying this hopefully we can gain a better understanding any even though that I know I'm going to get a bit of a backlash maybe from some of my autistic community but hopefully we can respect one another in regards to this and in saying this that we can um just be be kind to one another on the comments when if you feel to need what to is this syndrome okay if you're not familiar with Asperger's syndrome, Asperger's syndrome is defined as a developmental disorder related to autism and it is characterized by awkwardness and in social interaction with the peers, penetrate in speech and preoccupation by their very narrow interest. Just a brief background, in 1914 there was a guy by the name of Hans Asperger who was Russian, that conducted a research on his autistic-like patients who struggled with everyday nonverbal or nonverbal communication skills, peer interaction, limited but intense interest, higher than average IQ levels, strong verbal skills, and, and also an ability to remember details and facts. And just to be in mind also, and as I'm addressing this, not all autistics are the same. Just be in mind that everyone is different. So when you meet someone on the autism spectrum, just chain don't assume that just because you met just one they're all the same because we're all different with different traits this however will basically like now been recently believed that a a disorder, which has been characterized with such dif significant difficulties that involve social interaction with their peers non-verbal communication as well as alongside these characteristic traits of in some cases there has been some people that has been ever restricted and repeated behaviours and interests as another few signs or symptoms of autism or Asperger's syndrome, humbly. This does, however, from other spectrum disorders, due to its relative presenting a linguist, like your language skills and cognitive brain, you know, development in people with this syndrome. Although some experts say that physical clumsiness, peculiar yet odd use of language from people with AS aren't required in the diagnosis. 
in the modern day age, it came into existence, however, in the early 1980s and went through the stage of popularization and then became standard diagnosis in the early 1990s. However, in 2013, it has been clearly addressed in the Diagnostic Manual of the 5th edition of the Mental Health Disorders has been replaced the diagnosis of ASD to a What is autism then, SB? Autism is a mental condition that is presented from an early develop- childhood development stages that's characterised by great difficulty in communicating with their peers and forming relationship with others and in using language in abstract it's concepts. It's known as autism, autism spectrum disorder. Autism spectrum disorder, however, is referred to a range of conditions that are characterised by challenges with social skills, repeated behaviour and speech, non-verbal communication. The term spectrum, however, reflects on the wide variation and challenges and strengths possessed by each person that has autism. So... I'm going to list in the description box below if you want to know more about these, like my playlist versus the video. Anxiety and anxiety, what's the differentiation between them or what have you. So I'm going to quickly do this just to hopefully illustrate. Social anxiety is defined as or is also known as social phobia that involves intense fear of social situations for people that aren't familiar, you know, or that suffers from some situation or in which they feel that they're being watched by others or even being judged by others these type of situations may be also frightening and they'll become so anxious just thinking about it about socializing with their peers and then it comes to the point that they might just avoid socializing altogether or they may just tend to have that fight flight fright response that you know do they want to just you know approach somebody or whatever it may be so I'm saying this though, classic examples for me in social anxiety, if you want to know, based on the question that was asked, was obviously... They can vary from time to time, however. For me, with, when it comes down to it, like, it used to happen a lot with my, you know, panic attacks, anxiety attacks, when it came down to doing presentations in school. Sometimes, still to this day, when I'm trying to be in a large group of people, trying to socialise with people. Um, another one is just doing stuff that it like as if I'm at a, like the first one time I had a problem with it also was also when I was doing choir anyway back to this defined as intense nervousness low on self-consciousness arising from a fear of being close being watched or judged criticized by others that will tell them or lead them to avoidance or just avoiding certain things as it's clearly similar to social anxiety I want to try to do the brief differences quickly of social anxiety shyness and social awkwardness it rolls into one and also in saying that social anxiety and social phobia obviously interchanges with these two clinical terms so social anxiety brief more severe interferes with our everyday life obviously it disables or hinders to the point that we're doing everyday tasks and it just stops us in our tracks the majority of these everyday tasks that we do will take for granted shyness a difference or characteristic of people who have a low self-esteem about themselves or feeling apprehensive about themselves. Lack of comfort or awkwardness, especially when a person is basically in touch with other people in their group all around them. This again will obviously, as I said, basically with unfamiliar places in a, a new situation. Can be managed by being able to maybe, for example, focus on maybe getting a new job, new car or something distracting, hopefully... Dating new people of the shyness should hopefully help. Social awkwardness. Is your socialising, obviously. Trying to find the courage to talk to others in group. You stumble upon words. You're obviously stuttering. Mind goes blank for a few seconds and then it's hard to think and then you just get lost, lost for words. What struggles do you have because of these illnesses? Okay. Some of them. I in the past, what, what happened to me based on, like, you know... Doing speeches, presentations, and that in classes, be it at school, polytech, and what have you. My other everyday struggle right now, and saying this, even though I'm trying my very darn hardest to just get out there and actually, as I've said so many times before, seek out work, and that it has really, really, you know, to the point track thing. And also, in saying this, with my struggles, sometimes if I've been through a traumatic experience also with my anxiety, it goes up the roof and everything else in between that and it just triggers what have you. Are there any benefits from any of your illnesses that you're describing today? Well, 
there are some benefits. I feel that I can be organised in my nights. I can be organised in myself if, if you let me be. I'm able to hold a conversation with people. I am remaining eye contact with people nowadays. Even though now I'm trying to take micro pauses versus just looking away from you at a time. So I'm not really staring at you hardcore. He say I am starting to get out of my skin a bit more when it comes down to just socialising with people. Um, another benefit is... Some days I'll have good eye for detail, regardless, I'm really absorbed into some of my interests in that. So, you know, be it if I love doing something with science related or, you know, something with animals or music or even baking, I'll just, you know, go hardcore on that. What psychological help do you get for your illnesses? Psychological help would may mean for me is just keeping things written down in a journal or even if I'm blogging with you guys right now. Another one, what I do is I self-meditate. I do some yoga or exercise, whatnot. Mind exercises, be it crosswords or what have you. Just anything that will keep me going. Do you know any specific triggers that have you have when it comes down to your anxiety? There's a lot of triggers that causes my anxiety to go up the roof. It's still, like, as I said before in one of my videos, sometimes it can lead to some really misunderstandings. And that is based on heights versus money factor sort of thing not not many people wanting to talk to me so then i'm left out in the lurch you know being excluded from groups because people think i'm such a drama queen maybe many people may think of me as due to this mental illness which i'm not is also insane this of the trig possible trigger for me is just that with my anxiety trying to express how i feel and what I feel because in some ways, yeah, okay, as I said before, it's not how I say it or it's what I say, as I said in one part of my video. But then again, I, I believe that sometimes there can be some wires, you know, as we say, tangled up in the way of communication, we could say. And that's insane this, that there is always misunderstandings one way or another. What tools or skills do you use to help you to cope with your illness? It's similar to what I've just said before about the psychological help. Meditation, yoga, exercise versus basically writing things down. Just anything really just to keep me busy, you know, and distracted from the um, the actual, you know, triggers response. Breathing and counting one to ten and one, you know, hold for five seconds and then breathe out for five seconds. Or sometimes finding a distraction if I know my anxiety attack or panic attack is arising to basically just, you know, find some sort of patterns on the wall or something or some some form of numbers game I do here say so. someone I can tr trust to talk to just to rant rave or whatever so it's easy for me to you would like to just and educate about a, your mental illnesses well as I said before many people think that with people with anxiety social anxiety or any of them are meant to settle in their head they're just being too much of a drama king drama queen earlier in the piece is not all autistics are the same once you meet one they they are different on the scale of the you know of that spectrum regardless of the character traits that they show as well as the classic signs and symptoms another one is also another misconception is that you know i feel that just because they think that it's all in our head well drama acting and all that you know we're asking for attention and whatnot when we're not really because obviously all we need is some people to be loving caring and understanding and patient with us when it comes down to our mental illnesses no matter what it is in life you know and i feel that if we can't find anyone out there that can love and support us then you know my my thing is who needs them anyway if they want to drag us down anymore at the end of this for the last question is there anything else you would like to add to this i just have which is in number nine you know with the biggest misconception and in saying this also to end this i've written a book life of an asp looking into the life of asperger's syndrome of my life story with tips and advice after each chapter that i have clearly shared briefly on my videos 
so far. Nice. The link to my book will be in the description box below. And also in saying this, also what I like to add is I'm at the moment doing some projects. So if anyone of you are kind enough to maybe donate to my projects that I'm doing right now, this will go towards my PayPal account of the coffee account that I've started up at this point of time as well as some other crowdfunding pages. But at this point of time, it's just coffee. I'm trying to tidy up my like Patreon versus the give a little which is going to take a while because obviously it really needs a good tidy up links will be in the description box below so when you do decide to give to me if you want to for, to go towards my project basically this will help to continue what i'm doing right now for you guys live on screen or also what i'm doing right now is a plan out hopefully before april for autism awareness for doing some merch designing versus also branding my channel and doing other projects like bringing hopefully if i can find out a way to bring my avatar to introduce her to you guys if you want to see her lying around so i think this wraps up what i have to say so thanks for your support thanks for watching and thanks wendy again for inviting me feel free to check out her channel as said it will be listed in the box below as well as many other information that i'm gonna list in the description box below feel free to follow me on my social medias to keep up to date with what i get up to feel free to share these videos around to family and friends feel free to also if you haven't done so and you would like to join me on the bandwagon as i said earlier feel free to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for future videos like these. <laughs>